Hello guys, happy Friday. I know it's not Sunday, so I'm coming on a few days early. Um, just because I have something to say. I was watching my sermon from last week, and I realized that I didn't uh, really finish, or I said... I misspoke on something, so I'm going to clear it up and finish what I started. Um, I talked about, um, in, in the sermon, he's bringing sexy back, which is my, my last sermon. I talked about how women and men should work together for generations. Uh, women have been have been told that they are lesser than, and in somewhere in the 19th century, women just stood up and said no, because one thing I figured out is you can only suppress someone, hold them down for so long before they start to rebel. We weren't designed to be suppressed. We weren't designed to be kept down, put, put down, kept down, uh, put in our place. And that stuff only works for a little while. Eventually, um, the person or people will rise up and demand to be heard, to be, to be free. And that's what we demanded. Um, And I think that women and men working together is is so good. Because men have strengths that we as women don't have. And we have strengths that men, men don't have. We are, we are inherently different. And I don't think it's society that makes us different, really. I think it's God that make, makes us different, really. And I think we need to celebrate that. I don't think women and men are from two different planets. I think, I personally think that God designed us differently. And I think we need to be celebrating those differences because if we put it together, we'll be unstoppable if we stop fighting against each other. And I think that it's time for us to rise up as women and men and start not competing against each other, but compliment, complimenting each other. This is... Um, and this is often used for marriage, but I think it goes beyond marriage. I think, like I said, men have skills and strengths that women don't have, and women have strengths that um, men don't have. And I think our our thing, both individually and collectively is to put our strengths together and not try and go it alone, but to operate together, standing side by side and not ruling over each other or dominating each other, but um, working together. And I wanted to talk about um, my definition of sexy. Um, I see a lot of, not a lot of people, because I don't uh, add a lot of people with a lot of naked photos and a lot of revealing stuff, because that stuff just turns me off. Um, But I think... Sometimes women have the wrong idea about what sexy they 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 think of taking off all their clothes or wearing 
hardly nothing that's sexy, you know, or sleeping with guys just be because she can that sexy or for men sleeping with women just because um he has a penis and he can that sexy no that's just that's just sad that that shows me you need more in your life um and god never defined uh um God never defined relationships between women and men to be wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. He designed God's, God's ultimate design for the sexual act is to bring his spirit into a marriage. So it's to, it's to be a picture of his spirit, um, and to be fun too, but it's to bring um, people that are in covenant, are in the marriage covenant, closer together. It was it, it was not meant to be just about chest or about breast or about all of that stuff. All that stuff isn't sexy it, and um, to me because um, whether you're a woman or a man, you're giving yourself away. You're cheapening the greatness that God has put inside you. You're too great for that. Um, the, the, the precious thing about you is who you are inside, and whether you are a woman or a man, if you're using your body to get anywhere as a woman and a man, that's wrong. And I think we've had double standards for women and men for too long. Like, it's... it it. Like in the world, it's okay for um, a man to uh, sow his royal oats, but it's not okay for a woman. I'm here to tell men that you are as precious as any woman, and you don't deserve to be to 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 like use yourself or use her to get some kind of uh, sexual fulfillment that only lasts about two minutes or whatever. Like that part of you was meant to be shared with your wife in an intimate marital setting. And because it's too precious for you to just be spreading around men. And you are just as much of a king as a woman is a queen, and you deserve to be treated like that. And you spreading your, your yourself around or sleeping with all these women doesn't make you a man. It, it just makes you sad. It says that you're you're lost and looking for something, and the thing you're looking for is not, is not going to be found inside a woman. It's going to be found inside God. Only God can can give you what you're looking for, man. And women, women too, you. Th- you think sleeping with him would make him keep you, but no, it'll just you'll have fun for a while, but you'll you'll still be empty. And the Lord today wants to fill you up. Wants to fill you up. And you know what's real sexy to God, real sexy is when 
either a woman or a man can stand in his or her purpose and just do what they want to do. Somebody asked me, um, somebody messaged me and said, how could I get to, to know you? I didn't answer them, but I will answer it here. Uh, for me, don't focus on the fact you think I'm a priest by or uh, um, uh, whatever, whatever my looks are. That doesn't, that really just turns me off and causes me to um, kind of unfriend you or, you know, unsubscribe to your channel. Talk to me about what I do. Talk to me about who I am. Talk to me about uh, what's your favorite scripture, or I like what you said in this sermon, or I like who you are, not what you look like. A woman and a man want to be celebrated for who they are and not what they look like. Because I'm telling you, I'm turning 40 in September, and I'm telling you, what you look like won't last forever. Those perky boobs won't won't be perky forever. Uh, you know, uh, that underground won't be golden forever. It'll lose its hair and all that stuff. But what will last is when you walk in your purpose. When you are proud of who God has made you to be and what he's designed you to do. So, in short, don't, don't, come, don't come to any woman and say, Oh, girl, you're gorgeous. Talk about what she does and who she is and what he does and who he is. If we start there, our relationships would be, would be so much better. Um, I love reading romance books, but the one thing I hate about romance books, it's all about, it's all, I was thinking about this the other day, it's all, um, it's either, it's all about sex and too much sex, or either no sex at all. So I said to myself, I want to write things that are a happy medium. Yes, we have the spiritual component where God is coming in and whatever, putting a couple together. But yes, but in covenant, uh, the couple is engaging in... in uh, the, the marital bliss of sex, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think if the church starts not only talking about sex, but redefining sex, because sex is something that God created. God created it in the garden, and it's natural, but outside of covenant, because it's so explosive, and he's um, he's designed it to be creative and to bring a, a couple in covenant closer and to feel what he felt when he met Christ in the church. Um, he want he wants it to be just redefined. I think the church needs to be needs to uh, stop putting its head in the sand and start talking about the real stuff and stuff that God created. I think that's that's where um, people are going to feel safe. I think a lot of churches uh, people don't feel safe to talk about what's really going on. And it is, it behooves us uh, to be a safe place 
and a soft place for people to fall. Okay, guys, I'll see you later. Bye. And I'm going to call this one Redefining Sexy. So my definition of sexy is a woman or a man that can walk in his or her in in the purpose that God has defined for them. Okay, guys, I'll see you on Sunday. Bye.